Welcome, everyone, to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Macular degeneration. It's the leading cause of loss of vision in the United States. And in fact, it affects more than 10 million people. At present, macular degeneration, unfortunately, is still considered incurable. But... It's a big but, but there are some promising new treatments on the horizon. Here to talk about the disease, including a new treatment for the most common form of macular degeneration, is Mayo Clinic ophthalmologist, Dr. Sophie Bakri. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Bakri. Thank you. Well, hopefully we're finally going to hear some good news about macular degeneration. But before we do that, uh, tell us about the macula. So the macula is the center of the retina. It's the part of the eye that gives you the fine vision. And unfortunately, it's, it is prone to disease. And one of the big diseases that can affect the macula is macular degeneration. And that's why it's so debilitating a disease because it affects the central vision. So it's a part of the retina, and it's probably the most important part of the retina. And when you say it's prone to disease, you mean, and we call it a macular degeneration, it just wears out? Basically, it wears out. I mean, it starts to occur in patients over the age of 60. Um, the older you are, the more likely you are to get it. So it, it is a degeneration. And it, ultimately, you can't see anything in front of you. You can only see be on the sides. Is that right? That's right. It's mainly the central vision um, that is lost if it's not treated. So tell us more about the symptoms. How might someone, what would be the first thing someone might recognize with regard to their vision that would suggest it was macular degeneration? So um, when patients don't know about macular degeneration, they often think that something is just doesn't look right, something's off, um, it's blurry, um, or lines appear wavy. So typically I would say central blur. Central blur. So in the middle part of your vision, it looks blurry. Yes. And what about uh, the difference between wet and dry? Do those both present the same way with the blur in the center? Um, typically, patients can have dry macular degeneration without knowing it. Um, it, like any disease, has you know early, middle, and late stages. So, one could have the early stages and not know it, and it could linger on for years. And as the stage of dry macular degeneration becomes more advanced, there could be patches of the central vision um, that are missing. Now, as time progresses, the chances of the macular degeneration becoming wet increase. And what wet really means is that there is an unwanted blood vessel growing underneath the retina and it leaks fluid and it leaks blood and uh, the vision can be impaired because of that. So that's the difference between dry and wet is uh, the accumulation of blood vessels underneath the retina. Yes, that would make it wet. But most people have dry, right? Isn't that the far and away the most common type? Yes, it starts off as dry, but dry can just be a few drusen, which are like little spots of, under the retina, or it could mean um, atrophy, where there are patches where the cells in the retina have died. Atrophy or shrinkage. Shrinkage of the cells, yes. All right, and how do you tell the difference? How do you make the diagnosis? So typically we um, examine the patient at a machine called the slit lamp. We also take photos, and there are very sophisticated um, technologies now for assessing the very earliest uh, blood vessel growth. You see? So you can actually see that with your special instrument? We can see it in the later stages, but if we really want to detect it early, there are uh, some very sophisticated instruments that we can use um, as well. Is it important to detect it early? So the earlier it is detected and the earlier it is treated, the better the, the outcomes from treatment. All right, so let's talk about treatment because you've got some new treatments available. So for um, wet macular degeneration, we'll start with that. There is actually a new treatment um, available. Um, we have typically had uh, three injectable drugs that block the growth factor that makes the blood vessels. And now there is yet another um, uh, injectable drug, and that's just been FDA approved. And that's the one, those are the anti-VGFF, anti-VEG? Anti-VEGF, yes. VEGF. <laughs> anti-VEGF. Okay, so they got work in similar ways. Now we have um, a new anti-VEGF um, as well. Now the exciting thing about the field of wet macular degeneration is that there are other treatments coming. And right now patients 
come and see us for injections as often as every month. I mean, so, so you inject something into the eyeball? We do. It's a very, very tiny needle, and we do numb the eye. We sterilize the eye. It's an extremely tiny needle, but it can be uncomfortable, and um, it can be inconvenient for patients when it is needed as often as once a month. And that's just one eye. And indefinitely, if you have it, you just have to keep getting it as often as once a month, maybe every three months, whatever, but you never get to stop those shots? Usually you don't get to stop because it's a therapy. It's not a cure. Okay. And what about gene therapy? Uh, something new, maybe? So gene therapy is very exciting um, because with gene therapy comes the potential to do that one treatment that will continually deliver the therapy to the eye. So one instead of every month. Correct. One instead of And hundreds. when do you think we might have that? I'm hoping in a few years. Um, as you know, any new drug or any gene therapy has to be rigorously tested to make sure it's safe for patients and that it works. And uh, gene therapies are currently in clinical trials. But all these baby boomers that are going to be hitting the age where macular degeneration is going to become a bigger deal uh, are probably pretty interested in that. Is it likely that it will happen? I'm very optimistic. Good. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the dry, because it's more common. Uh, it can turn into the wet, but most people uh, who have macular degeneration start out with, with dry macular degeneration. And heretofore, there's really not been any treatment. Nutritional therapy, I think uh, you called it. So you take vitamins, and otherwise not much to treat it. But now you've got something, right? Not quite. We've got We're something close? on the horizon. Very <laughs> So um, there are actually a number of therapies in clinical trials for dry macular degeneration. And there are therapies that have slowed down the um, death of the cells, which is great. Um, it, uh, they've resulted in less vision loss. And there are therapies in clinical trials that surprisingly have been shown to increase vision. So. As we get further along the clinical trials, we're going to learn more. Wow. Not also just to stop it, but actually to improve vision. To improve it, correct. What's the name of that new antioxidant agent that uh, begins with an R? <laughs> the, uh, that's in uh, risugetinib. It's in um, phase... Risugetinib. It's in phase two clinical trials. Those results have just been announced, so that will be moving um, further into clinical trials. What about vitamins and supplements for, yeah. for not only prevention, but also if you've got it and these new drugs aren't quite available yet, particularly if you have the dry macular degeneration? So there is a um, supplement that was shown to slow down macular degeneration um, according to the um, age-related eye disease study. So a R E D S, the A Reds uh, 2 supplement, and that has a number of vitamins in it that may slow it down. But it's also important to control risk factors. There's no point taking a vitamin if you're a heavy smoker, you eat fatty foods, you don't exercise, you know, general um, lifestyle and, and the Mediterranean diet um, have to really um, uh, contribute. Um, here as well. So, so trying to have a healthy heart also leads you to have healthier eyes as well. Definitely. Okay, so uh, age is the most important risk factor, but isn't it true that smokers are, have twice the risk of developing macular degeneration? That is, that's a well-known risk factor, yes. Wow. All right, the disease is called macular degeneration. It's the most common cause of vision loss among Americans. It's likely to affect more and more Americans because, you know what, we're all living longer, and age is the most important risk factor. It's still incurable, but there are new treatments that are promising. Dr. Sophie Bakri, ophthalmologist at the Mayo Clinic, I'm, we're all so hopeful. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.